Now on this video we will be taking a very in-depth look at some very exotic DDR3 memory. This one over here is the very best LPDA hyper based DDR3 memory kit from ADATA. I think the exact model is ADATA XPG Plus version 2.0. It's a very rare memory kit nowadays, but with the help of Zamin from Azerbaijan, I managed to get my hands on one of these kits from the devs of Asia. And the funny thing was the price. This particular uh, kit cost only 11 euros, so like five and a half euros or six euros per stick, so nothing at all if you ask me. If you see this particular uh, kit going for sale on sites like eBay, the price can be even like 150 euros or 100 euros or 200 euros. People who are aware about how rare these sticks are, they usually ask a lot on the second-hand market like eBay, for example. I personally have been collecting LPDA hyper-based memories for many years now. My favorite kits have been the top-notch options from Corsair for a very good reason. So for example, the GDX2s and Dominator GT 2000 Cas 7s. The top-notch options from Corsair, they are usually the very best for uh, 2000 MHz operation with 675 timings. Many of the other vendors who also produced LPD hyper based memory kits can't usually even post that configuration at all. For example, uh, Kingston HyperX based LPD hyper, they usually can't post 675 timings at all at 2000 MHz plus. They are usually just tied to CAS7 operation only. The very best sticks from Corsair can do that configuration with 1.8 volts or even below 1.8 volts. So uh, the quality difference when it comes to LPDA hyper-based DDR3 memories is huge. There are good options as well from other vendors. The one you see in front of the camera right now is one of them. There's also a very good uh, chance to get a good kit from Super Talent, for example. My particular uh, kit is not the highest pin, so the highest pin was 2200 CAS8, I think. Mine is uh, 2888, but it can do that very specific configuration with voltage of like 1.85 to 1.9 volts, and the highest frequency I managed to run the kit at was like 2140, with roughly the same main timing, so pretty good result if you ask me. I think some of the G-Skill Perfect Storms can be alright. The highest pin should be uh, 2133 888 or 2200 888. I have a few sticks at, uh, which are rated at 2000 MHz with 888 timings, but they aren't very good. They cannot do 675 timings at 2000 megatransfers per second, but they are, but they are still pretty alright for collection purposes. I think the last last one that should be extremely good would be the OCC Blade, 2000 MHz or megatransfers per second and 787 timing. So pretty much the same specs as the Dominator GT 2000 Cas 7s. But you can't really find that specific kit anymore because those are, just like many other of these uh, LPD hyper based kits, based on the earlier revision of LPD Hyper Memory IC. And those used to have some very random dev issues, but it seems that it varies. Because even these A-Data kits should be based on the earlier revision, just like G-Skill uh, Perfect Storms, but they usually stay alive for some reason. So uh, it's very hard to say like what are the real facts behind those random depth issues, but if you manage to find a working OCC blade 2000 cas 7 it should be very good on average. Now, uh, when it comes to this A-Data XPG Plus 2200 cas 8 based on the information that I got from Ground and Giggles, for example, who are from Germany, these aren't as good as the best stuff from Corsair on average. Many of these A-Data sticks cannot even do 675 at 2000 MHz or megatransfers per second. And those that can do that configuration, they usually need a lot of voltage. But I, I still want to just test that out. And even if they are bad, they are still good for collection purposes. And that's the main reason I wanted to get these sticks for. I already have many very good like uh, LPD hyper-based 
DDR3 memory sticks for benching purposes. I just wanted to get these sticks because they look damn awesome with these tall heatsinks. They don't make this kind of heatsinks for memory anymore nowadays, but the main reason behind that is the compatibility. Because if you have so tall memories like this, they usually don't fit very well with very tall air coolers, which are very large and fan might be uh, like uh, touching these tall heat sinks, whatever. But they are still, I think they look pretty damn awesome. I think they are one of the best looking uh, DDR3 memory kits ever. But nowadays, memory overall doesn't need that much cooling anymore, like back in the day with some of the very warm DDR1, DDR2, and even some of the DDR3 memories can actually get pretty warm. I think LP the Hypers are a good example. They can get pretty warm if you let them sit in some tight spot for long enough without active airflow. But yeah, so let's test these sticks individually on the Rampage Extreme, see what kind of voltage they need, or first of all, see if they can even post and boot 675 timing successfully at 2000 megahertz or megatransverse per second. And if they can run that configuration, what is their minimum voltage, like roughly for that configuration. Will be very interesting. I really hope for the best. I would like to have pretty damn awesome ADATA XPG uh, Plus 2200 CAS8 sticks as well. So uh, without further ado, let's install one of these sticks now to the Rampage Extreme motherboard and let's see what kind of result we'll get. Oh, by the way, one thing that I noted with these uh, memory modules is that their heat sinks are very thick or very uh, wide. So you can actually install four of these uh, memory sticks onto this motherboard as uh, these slots are very close to each other, they just wouldn't fit. So uh, it seems that with these A-Data uh, LP hyper-based memories, so XPG Plus 2.0, you can only use two of these sticks at a time. Well, these aren't really meant for 4DIM operation, as with 4DIMs, you are limited to much lower memory frequencies and much worse timings. But just wanted to point that out, out of interest. But yeah, let's see what kind of results we get. Okay, so let's press F1 to enter the setup. i load the uh, binning profile so that you can see the settings. So 500 times 9, this is E8600 CPU on the Rambex Extreme, BIOS 1. 200 megahertz strap on the north bridge, 2000 megahertz on the memory frequency or megatransfers per second, common rate 1, 675 timings. Uh, TRAS can be either 18 or 20 or 21, it doesn't make that much of a difference. 472.10, 4, and many of these sub timings are set manually to somewhat all right values. We can use performance level 5 or auto. For uh, better compatibility, we could start with auto on the uh, performance level and 1.55 volts on the north bridge, which is the sweet spot voltage for the channel B. You need to be very accurate about the north bridge voltage, especially if you use a 200 megahertz strap. The north bridge voltage must be set like spot on. It cannot be too low, nor it can be too high. For channel B, 1.55 is the sweet spot value on this motherboard. For channel A, 1.63 volts for this configuration. So this frequency and these timings. This board can run performance level 5 with these vol voltages. On channel A, I need to put 1.63 and if I run dual channel, the worst channel will uh, decide. So that means I need to use 1.63 volts on the north bridge voltage. And I'll start with DRAM voltage of 1.93, which many of my like worst WGTs have been able to uh, run at among those sticks that can do this whole configuration, I mean. So let's see what happens. F10, save and exit. Okay, so the good news is that I managed to actually post and boot that whole configuration. So. Uh, 2000 megahertz, 675, 20, 72, common rate 1 timings. And here is the SPD tab. So 2200, 888, 24, 32, 1.65 volts. So, uh, yeah, but the worst or the bad news is that I had to raise the voltage. So 1.93 gets me 
gave blue screen of death when I tried to boot to the operating system. Now the voltage is at 1.98 to 1.99 and it's still probably quite on the edge that can I actually even run this stable in SuperPi 32M. So uh, even if it passes, the kit or this particular uh, stick is definitely not among the very best Elopida Hypers that I have at my place over here. So uh, let's put the SuperPi 32M folder to the RAM drive and uh, let's try to run SuperPi 32M. It's possible that it will crash quite quickly. Okay, so we got the initial value, so it's pretty likely that we can run this configuration at least at some voltage or with some voltage on air cooling. So uh, I'll try to find the lowest voltage, then I will just put the uh, voltage value on a piece of tape and I'll move on to the second stick. But yeah, I'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, so that one passed just fine. I'll try to lower the voltage a bit more, but uh, if I cannot lower the voltage at all, I'll just move on to the second stick. So now, let's try something like 1.95 or, some, or something around that mark. Okay, so 1.96 fails quite quickly in SuperPipe 32M. 1.93 and 1.94, they usually give blue screen of death when I try to boot into the operating system. So I think we can mark 1.97 to 1.98 or 1.99 on this first ADATA memory stick. Okay, so I think we can write 1.97 to 1.99. The exact voltage was like 1.988, but not sure what it is with, uh, I mean, when measured with a digital multimeter. But I usually do this uh, like this, so I just test the lowest voltage and just mark it on a piece of tape like this. For example, here's a very basic Dominator GT 1866 Cat 7 stick, and the lowest voltage for that same configuration was 1.93. So now I'll just install the second stick straight to the fourth slot and just try to uh, post and boot the settings where I left with the earlier one. So 1.96 volts and let's see if it can even post and boot those settings. Okay, so not looking very good. So 1.96 instant fail in SuperPi 32M, but at least it managed to uh, post and boot those settings. So I'll just try to raise the voltage up as well to like 1.98, 1.99 and let's try again. So the second stick was a tiny bit worse compared to the first one. I tried 1.97 and 1.98, but they failed after some time in SuperPi 32M. Then, out of curiosity, I tested very low voltage, like 1.86, but that didn't even post at all. 1.99 was very close, and 2.0 volts passed quite fine, and uh, now I will just mark 2.0 on the piece of tape on top of the memory heatsink. So this test kind of proves that the A-Data XPT Plus 2.0 don't have the best overclocking value compared to some other models from other vendors. If you want the very best LPDA Hyper based DDR3 memories for benchmarking and overclocking, you should look at the Corsair Dominator GT memory kits that you can find quite easily from sites like eBay. The good news is that the Dominator GT they are usually widely available. So this is why I've been calling the Elpida Hypers as the pinnacle of Corsair memory, because at that time, during 2009 and 2010, Corsair memory was pretty much above all others. And this test kind of proves it. This is the very best offering from a data, close to two volts for this configuration, yet the very best sticks from Corsair can do this very same configuration at one point. 8 volts or even under 1.8 volts. So uh, thank you for tuning in for this 775 overclocking video. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like to see this one. And thanks for watching one of our videos once again and I will see you on the next one.